moons, stars, asteroids, galaxies, and the space outside Earth. This is my attraction. I am Sumit and today I am talking about colonizing in space. You know, actually I often go to space and to other planets, but only in my dreams. In reality, only astronauts have been to a few places in space. The International Space Station and the Moon are few examples. Living there for longer durations as new home is still in fiction. So, to make it a reality, let's come together and colonize in space. But what colonizing in space mean? Colonizing in space simply means setting up a colony or a habitat in space. It can be anywhere between the Earth's orbit and far away in the galaxy or even beyond it. When I was nine, I scribbled a picture of a colony on the moon. As I was always wondering, can we colonize outside the Earth? While reading, I came across various views on colonizing in space. Some said, we want to spread human species across the universe. While other people said, instead, why don't we make Earth a better place to live? But a few things do make us think about, what if an asteroid like Apophis hits the Earth and entire human species vanish just like dinosaurs did? Or what if, due to global warming, the entire Earth sets on fire at a larger scale than what happened in Australia in 2020? Or what if we run out of resources on the Earth? Or can we utilize space to fulfill Earth's needs? For example, shifting industries outside the planet. And humans will work from home. Even if we decide to build the colony in space, there are plenty of challenges to overcome. First, we need to decide the place to build a self-sustainable colony. It can be in the Earth's orbit, on Moon, Mars, Venus, near-Earth objects, etc. Colony in the Earth's orbit will be in the form of energy industry which can fulfill large portions of Earth's needs. We get plenty of solar energy in space and therefore power generation in Earth orbit could be the best way to reduce greenhouse gases. But to colonize in Earth orbit, we need a torus, a donut-shaped round hollow ring, and it should be rotating to create artificial gravity. Also, we would still need to find different ways to save ourselves from asteroids. The next possible habitats could be on Moon, Mars, Venus, near-Earth objects, etc. Requirements for self-sustainable habitats are gravity, oxygen, environment, water, food, shelter, and reasonable temperature. Either we have to find such conditions on other planets or we'll have to create those. The most important factor to build the colony is energy. We need energy to go to and fro from new habitats, to run machineries, produce oxygen and necessary environment, generate water, and to make our living easy. Best way is our solar and nuclear energy to meet our requirements. The next factor is to identify resources availability to meet our requirements. We cannot take bricks from Mumbai to build a house on Mars. To reduce the cost, we can get hydrogen, oxygen, silicon, iron, etc. from other planets. Near Earth objects will be a good choice as a pit stop to collect needed supplies and to maintain the rockets. Building mines with the help of trained robots on Moon, Mars, near Earth objects, etc. would be the best choice to get resources. Further, these resources have to be converted into desired architecture as well as engineering work. Transport and communication also need to be advanced and current know-how. Spaceships need to be efficient, nuclear power fueled for self-reliant fuel system and large enough to carry significant population. Of course, if we want to move the entire city into space. Currently, transportation to orbit is the limiting factor in space colonization. Data shows that single launch costs are very high, approximately 100 million US dollars per kg from Earth to low Earth orbit. There are many ways to reduce these costs. Reusing the first stage 
for building the rocket building facility and launch pad in space itself are few examples. Similar is the case with communication. While colonizing in space, it would be a necessity to keep communicating with the crew aboard during frequent interplanetary travels to help them with problems, difficulties, etc. Communication from Mars suffers from lot of delays due to speed of light and varying distance between Earth and Mars. The lag is between 7 minutes and 44 minutes. Can we bring it to a few seconds? Further we are talking about is designs and blueprints. For example, to colonize on moon we will need a dome shaped habitat and to colonize on Mars we will need an underground habitat to avoid the frequent dust storms. This will have additional benefit of utilizing geothermal heat to maintain temperature on colder planets like Mars and using ice to get water and oxygen. Life support and safety on new habitats would be another challenge. Planting seeds on the habitat would be another benefit. Plants can make a colony self-sustainable by providing oxygen to breathe and fruits and vegetables as food. Who knows, we'll shift to Kepler-452b or Kepler-1649c, a second Earth. So what do you think? Would you like to protect our mother Earth by colonizing in space? Would you like to visit and mine the golden asteroid to reduce the poverty on Earth? Would you like to enjoy space tourism if I give an offer to you all? 7 days 6 night 2 to Space City. Special discount if you book early. Finally, would you like to learn and understand how aliens speak in case humanity meets alienity? This raises a question in my mind. Can we build a machine that can read and translate emotions of any living being so that we can understand each other better, even the aliens?